Hi students, Professor Gray here. Let's continue on with practicing Lewis structures. So in the last couple videos, we learned how to approach a drawing our structures in two different ways. One was to start with a number of valence electrons, and the other one was starting with just going ahead and drawing a structure based on knowing uh, what things like to do. So number nine, we have N2H4. So we have a couple of nitrogens and we have four hydrogens. Now we know hydrogens do not like to be in between two other atoms. So we probably have our nitrogens as central atoms. So we can go ahead and bond those together. And then we can distribute the four hydrogens around the outside. So again, like with our other structures, you guys can put them top and bottom, the hydrogens, or you can put them top and to the right, or on the left nitrogen, it would be top and to the left, or you guys can do them bottom and left or bottom and right, or you can make them at angles, however you want, as long as everybody has their octet rule, followed and we use up the correct number of valence electrons. Okay, so looking at our hydrogens, we can see that our hydrogens all have a duet. They're all doing what they like to do. They've got a single bond and they are not between two atoms. They are terminal. Looking at the nitrogens, we can see that each one of our nitrogens only has a sextet, so there's a problem here. And just to review how we count, we've got two, four, six, and that would work exactly the same for the nitrogen on the right-hand side. So obviously we're missing two electrons in order to make the octet. So let's go back and take a look at the slides that tell us what nitrogen likes to do and see if that will help us out to know whether we should make the bond between the two nitrogens into a multiple bond, a double bond or a triple bond, or if we should add some lone pairs. So going back to this slide right here, it says nitrogens like to have three bonding pairs and one lone pair. So what that would look like for the nitrogen on the left is we've got three bonding pairs already, those three single bonds, and nitrogen likes to have a lone pair of electrons. So we'll go ahead and do that right there for that nitrogen. Now the nitrogen on the right hand side, it has the exact same situation, except the space that we left for the lone pairs happens to be on the bottom of the nitrogen, which is completely okay. We can put the lone pair electrons right there. Now we can see that everybody has a duet in the case of hydrogens or an octet in the case of nitrogens. We've got two, four, six, eight, and two, four, six, eight. Six electrons from the three single bonds and two electrons from the lone pair, which are also called non-bonding electrons. Okay, so everybody has a duet or an octet, so we followed that important rule. And the other important rule is that we have to use uh, the appropriate number of valence electrons that are available to us for making this structure. So we've got two nitrogens, so we'll have N times two, and we have four hydrogens, so we'll have H times four. Now hydrogens bring along with them one electron, and we can see that because they're in group one or one A. So if we have four hydrogens, that's four times one, and that makes four. And our nitrogens are in group 15 or 5A, which means they have how many electrons each? Five, that's right. So if we have two of them, that's five times two, which gives us 10. So we have 14 electrons available for our structure. 
So remember the two most important rules, the octet rule and the valence electron number, getting that correct. And then after that, uh, the, uh, oh, sorry, the atoms get, getting to do what they like to do. And in number 12, we'll see how that's sometimes not possible, but we still have to follow the octet rule and we have to get the number of valence electrons correct. Okay. So let's go ahead and check this and make sure that we've got 14 electrons that we're using and hopefully I can count correctly this time. Last time I counted one of the bonds twice and it messed me up. So here we go. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we have a winner of a structure there. Now, again, you guys could have drawn it like this and put those lone pair electrons up there. It's exactly the same structure. So those single bonds there, the atoms on each side of the single bond can rotate around. And when we get to the molecular ge geometry section, I'll show you some models and show you how they're spinning around. So these guys here, they can spin around and these guys here, they can spin around and uh, this bond right here in the center, the atoms on either side of it can spin around. So we can draw them any which way as long as they're following the rules. Okay, so that brings us to number 10. So we've got CH2OS. So let's go ahead and do it the original way where we started with atoms and valence electrons just to mix it up a bit. So we've got carbon we've got two hydrogens, we've got oxygen, and we've got sulfur. So carbon is part of group 14 or 4A. So we've got one of those, so that's four valence electrons. And hydrogens we saw in number nine, they each have one electron. And if we've got two hydrogens, that's two times one, which is two. And our oxygen and our sulfur, those are both part of group 16 or 6A, so they both bring along with them how many electrons? Six, that's right. Okay, so we've got six and a six. So four plus two is six, plus six is 12, plus six is 18. So we've got 18 valence electrons to work with for our structure, and now we need to take CH2OS and just guess at a structure uh, with knowing what we know about what things like to do so we can get to a viable structure quicker. Now with carbon, we know it likes to be central. So we can go ahead and go, okay, Let's stick carbon central and see what happens here. Well, we kind of sort of have a problem there because we can see that we've got sulfur on the end and sulfur likes to have two bonding pairs and two electrons just like oxygen does. So that should be sending out an alarm. Wonk, wonk, wonk. There's something wrong here. So how about we move some things around, shuffle some things around here. So how about we draw oxygen at the top with a double bond like we saw in formaldehyde and we erase this over here then we could see that carbon right there has four bonding pairs. So it's completely happy, except we have to put sulfur somewhere. So maybe all of the, or both of the hydrogens are not bonding to carbon. So that's okay. Let's go ahead and 
erase that one and put it somewhere else. And remember, this is okay because we're learning how to draw structures and having to erase and draw a few times is how we learn. So let's go ahead and put sulfur here and then throw the hydrogen over there. Okay, so we've placed all of our atoms in places where they're doing what they like to do in regards to bonding pairs. So the hydrogens each have one bonding pair and the carbon has four bonding pairs. So we've got two from the double bond and two from the two single bonds and sulfur also has two bonding pairs, two uh, single bonds on each side. Now, knowing what you know about oxygen and sulfur, what are they missing? Lone pairs, that's right. So oxygen and sulfur are in the same group, so they tend to do the same thing. So they both like to have two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. Remember, we can get two bonding pairs through having a double bond or having two single bonds. So let's just go ahead and put our lone pair electrons are two lone pairs on each oxygen and sulfur. Now looking at that, does everybody have an octet or a duet? Are we following the octet rule? So hydrogens have their duets. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Sulfur, two, four, six, eight. And carbon, two, four, six, eight. So we're following the octet rule there. And let's count up all 18 electrons and see if we've got a winner here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine electron pairs, which makes 18 individual electrons. So if I counted them in twos like I usually do, that would be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 16, 18. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner here. Now, there is an isomer, which means that we have the same molecular formula, but we have a different connection of the atoms. And some of you might have seen it right away and you're like, whoa, why are you drawing it that way? I drew it this other way. Absolutely, absolutely. And since oxygen and sulfur are in the same column, they behave in the same way and they bond in the same way. So what we can do is we can switch their positions and we're going to get that we've used up 18 valence electrons and we're following the octet rule and everybody is still doing what they like to do. So we can also do that structure and if you want to go ahead and make sure that everyone is doing what they like to do, we're following the octet rule and we've used up 18 valence electrons. Go right ahead you guys, but it's gonna work. Okay, moving on to number 11. So in number 11, we have C2H6O. So let's do atom and valence electrons. We've got carbon times two, hydrogen times six, and a single oxygen. Okay, so carbons, they're in group 14 or 4A. So what we're going to do is multiply 4 by 2 to get 8. Hydrogens, we know they have how many valence electrons or how many electrons total? Total. That's one each. So if we have six of them, that's six. And oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16 or 6A. So that single oxygen is going to give us six electrons there. And 6 and 6 is 12 plus 8 makes 20. So we have 20 valence electrons available for this structure. 
Now looking at C2H6O, we have seen this one before a few times. And I'm just doing it again for you guys to see that isomers are okay. And if you have drawn something different from somebody that you're working with, but they both of your structures are following the octet rule and they've used a the correct number of valence electrons, you're probably both correct. So let's go ahead and bond the carbons together because we know the carbons love to bond to each other. Now we've got six hydrogens, so let's go ahead and start to distribute them evenly. And if we distribute them evenly, the problem that we will see right away is that we didn't put the oxygen anywhere. So we're going to need to erase one of the bonds to the hydrogen and put who there? Oxygen, that's right. Okay, and we'll throw the hydrogen on the other side of oxygen. Now, looking at this structure, you can see that each of your carbons has an octet. So if you count around it, it would be two, four, six, eight. And each of your hydrogens has a duet, but there's a problem with that oxygen there. And what we notice is that it has two bonding pairs. So we've used uh, two, four electrons so far. So we need to place four more on there somehow. And oxygen likes to have two bonding pairs and two what? Lone pairs. That's right. Okay, so there we go. And now you can count around and see that oxygen has its octet and it's doing what it likes to do. So let me go ahead and erase these little arrows here because I need to draw some more arrows so we can count stuff up. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we've used up 20 valence electrons, which is this number here. All of our hydrogens have a duet and our carbons have their octets and our oxygen has its octet also. So that's a whole lot of drawing going on in that structure. So the other way that we can write this, if we wanted to write it in a condensed format, would be CH3, CH2, OH. So here we have the molecular formula, here we have the condensed formula, and this one right here is the full molecular structure. Now we've seen this, like I said before, this is called ethanol. This is our drinking alcohol and it's our biofuel. So drinking alcohol, I mean that it's the alcohol that's in our beer, our wine, our Jack Daniels, all that other stuff. And there are many, many types of alcohol, but this particular one is the one that's in our um, drinks that we enjoy on Friday and Saturday nights. And it's also a bio biofuel. So it's used uh, to power machines like um, automobiles. So the isomer for this that we've seen before is dimethyl ether. And dimethyl ether, oops, let me put that bond in there. Dimethyl ether looks like this. Again, you guys have seen dimethyl ether before. And what we'll notice is that all of the hydrogens have a duet and the carbons have their octets. So if you count around them, two, four, six, eight. And that oxygen in the middle, what is it missing? What do we need to make the structure correct? Lone pairs, that's right. Because oxygens like to have two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. 
So if we count that out, we'll see that we're using 20 valence electrons and everybody has an octet or a duet. Those are the two most important rules. And then everybody's doing what they like to do. So that's good. So we've got a winner of a structure there. And again, both structures are correct. Both molecules exist. They are completely different molecules with different characteristics. So we need to know that they both exist and we need to know how to draw both of them. Okay, <coughs> moving on to number 12. Number 12 is carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide, let's go ahead and do our number of atoms and our valence electrons. So we have carbon and we have oxygen. Carbon brings four electrons and oxygen brings six and that's a total of 10. So who's the central atom here? Either one, because there's only two of them, so they gotta bond to each other, right, you guys? So they're both central, they're both terminal. Okay, so let's bond these guys together. So we've got carbon bonded to oxygen, and we've used two out of the 10 valence electrons available to us. Now the rule said after that, once you bond your atoms together, you're gonna distribute the lone pairs to the terminal atoms. We've got two of them, carbon and oxygen. So we've used up two electrons, so we go four, six, eight, 10. Now, following this, these rules doesn't mean it's gonna take us to the correct structure right away because part of the rules say, once you do that, take a look at both of your atoms and see if they have an octet. So if we look at carbon, we've got two, four, six, and the same for oxygen. And carbon says to oxygen, hey, I don't have an octet and we have to follow the octet rule here. So you need to share some of your electrons. And oxygen says, eh, all right, but I'm really mad about that because I don't like to have just one lone pair of electrons. I like to have two lone pairs. Also, I don't think I have an octet yet. And carbon is over here and it's like, ha ha ha, I have an octet now. But I'm still unhappy because I have lone pairs and carbons don't like lone pairs. And then oxygen says, hey, I don't even have an octet. And the rule is that everybody has to have an octet before anybody can do anything else. So you need to share your electrons too. And carbon's like, okay, I just told you I don't like lone pairs. So I'll go ahead and throw those in the middle and they'll go from non-bonding electrons to bonding electrons. So what we have is a triple bond between carbon and oxygen. And what we can see now is that carbon has an octet. So two from the lone pair, four, six, eight from the triple bond, and the same exact thing for the oxygen. So they're following the octet rule, which is one of the rules that we have to follow in order to have a correct structure. And we can see that the other rule, the number of valence electrons is being followed. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, and those two rules have to follow. And the third rule that things um, are doing what they like to do, that one happens if we can make it happen. But with this molecule right here, carbon dioxide, we can't make carbon have four bonding pairs because there's only one thing to bond with, oxygen, and we can't have a quadruple bond. We can only have single, double, and triple. And the oxygen, it can't have a double bond in two lone pairs because the carbon needs to have an octet. And if the oxygen has two lone pairs, 
then the carbon can't have an octet. So this molecule right here, while it follows the octet rule and uses up 10 valence electrons, it's not happy because the carbon and the oxygen both are not happy. So that makes for a completely unhappy molecule, carbon monoxide, and it goes around trying to make everybody else unhappy too because it is unhappy itself. And we know people like that in the world and there are molecules like that. So what carbon monoxide likes to do is it likes to jump on the iron in your hemoglobin and push your oxygen out of the way. And that means that the red blood cells that are going to all of your cells to deliver oxygen will deliver carbon monoxide instead of oxygen if you're breathing in carbon monoxide. And that means what happens to you? you suffocate. So that's why carbon monoxide is so dangerous because it has a lot higher affinity for that hemoglobin than O2 does. So big, bad, mean molecule right there. Alrighty, moving on to BRHO. Now, usually when we have an acid, we would draw the hydrogen in the front, but sometimes you'll see formulas drawn with a hydrogen in the middle. And don't let that mislead you. We know hydrogens do not like to be in the middle of two other atoms. So let's go ahead and put the hydrogen terminal. Now we have bromine and we have oxygen, and we have to decide who goes in the middle in this molecule. Now we also know something about halogens. We know that halogens like to be terminal. They like to have a single bond and three lone pairs. So the structure that we can draw initially we'll probably put the oxygen in the middle and put the hydrogen to one side and put the bromine to the other side. And if we could guess on this about what things like to do, we'd probably go ahead and put three lone pairs on the bromine because that's what they like to do and two lone pairs on the oxygen because that's how oxygen likes to bond. So if we look at this, we can see that bromine has an octet and oxygen has an octet and hydrogen has a duet. Now let's go back and make sure that we have the correct number of valence electrons that we're using up in this structure here. Because remember, we have to follow the octet rule and use up the correct number of valence electrons. So we have bromine, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. Now bromine is a halogen and halogens always have how many valence electrons? Seven, that's right, because halogens are in group 17 or 7A. Oxygen six and hydrogen one. So hydrogen one, and oxygen six here. So what we have is seven plus one, which is eight, plus 16, which makes 14. So let's go ahead and count up and see if we've used up 14 valence electrons. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Ding, 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 ding. We have a correct structure here. All right, you guys. That video seems to be long enough, so I'll come back with the next slide on Lewis structures in a little bit. So, see you in a few minutes. Bye-bye.